Hey. <clears throat> just got my hair cut. I just remembered that when I looked at the, the video right before I started. Um, I got a MySpace message from this girl named Katie. And she uh, has some interesting things to say about war and people and ask questions like, why, why be happy? She said, I, I understand everything sucks. Or I understand, okay, let me, let me read this because it's an interesting email. The war is shit, yes. People are dying needlessly every day, yes. Government doesn't do shit but add to the violence, so why be happy? I think that we can't let outside influences affect whether or not we're happy, whether or not what we're feeling. Ultimately, the fact that the government's doing this doesn't affect me. I choose to affect myself. I choose to let it affect me. And if you want to feel good and live positively, you can. And I think that's how you do overcome it. It's not by giving into it and screaming and, and all that. You, you have to just be, be positive and keep giving that nonstop. Don't stop. You can't. As soon as you buy into the anger, you, you've, you've, you've gotten involved in the conflict. Although, in order to overcome conflict, you have to get involved with the conflict. Which is why I think you do have to let it affect you, because it's real. Wow. So, everything I was just saying, I don't agree with. This is great. This is why I like to get things like this out. I think that you, you're right. When there's war going on, don't be... Po be positive... But accept the situation see, and, and be honest about the situation and what the situation is, which is the fact that the government's committing murder all over the place and no one's really doing anything to stop them. She asked me, what, what would the world be without hate and violence? Like, doesn't it, aren't we supposed to have it? Because, I mean, it is a binary opposite of, of love. And, you know, pain and love, they exist, they coexist, they create reality together. I think that war will always exist and conflict will always exist, but that's because we are flawed as human beings. It's because we don't know of any better way in general. I think deep down we do know a better way, but we're afraid to open ourselves up in order to get it because I think the better way the way to overcome conflict like any conflict is to communicate is to drop your walls your guard and just and, and be totally real with someone completely real open up tell them about all the pain that you've had in your life no one's gonna wanna kill you if you talk about the pain that you feel and the sadness that you feel all they're gonna wanna do is talk to you more and open up themselves so I think that this language barrier is a real problem because we can't do that right now. Maybe in a hundred years. I'm going to make my life about this. I've already kind of made my life about this, but I, communication and language is ridiculously important. And I want to make this a worldwide uh, endeavor to try and like maybe like put programs in place where in a hundred years our great-great-grandchildren will all have one language to unify them or all have four languages to unify them. But, you know, like any country that develops one language. The reason that countries are countries are because <clears throat> they have a common language with throughout the country. Countries have like a national language. That's how that country can be a unit. I just watched my video and with Amanda, she pointed out that not every country does have like a national language. I don't know. I don't know if every, if every country does or not. I know most countries do. Um, but like in Europe, a lot of the countries, like Switzerland in particular, has like mostly German and then it's got a bunch of French in the West. And it's not that everybody does, but I, I find I think that's why there's a lot of conflict in Europe is because there's so many different people speaking all these different languages in such a small area. Uh, I think that national languages are a very very highly important part aspect of the country, and you know most countries, if not all countries, have one language that is primary. And for this planet to become a unit, which it will eventually, it's just a matter of time. Like, it, you know, we're all, it's like tr we're tribes right now, and we're all kind of meeting each other for the first time on a global scale. I think in order for that to happen, we have to uh, form some kind of, some common form of communication. It's just a matter of time. But we got to start talking about it now. And we'll put things in place.
and don't feel overwhelmed by it because I'm not asking every person to learn Chinese or every person to learn English. It's just about English. It's just about putting it in place and starting, the, getting the ball rolling. We just we have to start. We've got to start. We can't not. Look at what look at the what we have. This option that we have with the internet. This it's available to us. And she said, uh, "Do we deserve peace?" She asked me if if we deserve peace. Love is stronger than hate. I don't know that we deserve peace. We don't really deserve anything. We get what we want. It with what we want. We create our reality, and then that's what exists. We don't deserve war or peace or pain or love. We don't deserve it. We have to create it. It comes from inside. And I think that I personally don't want to fight. Although I'm willing to argue, I'm willing to verbally fight, I guess if you want to call it, confront, in order to overcome it, so that it doesn't come to blows, so that we don't kill each other. Conflict comes and goes. Death is permanent. You can't kill someone over an argument. You can. You can kill someone, as we see every day. But it's totally deconstructive. We're ripping ourselves apart. We're ripping the human race apart. And we don't have to. We don't have to. Come on. One person. I challenge one person to say that we have to do this. One person. Make a make a video blog and tell me that we have to do me that, that we have to do this and tell me why. Because I don't think that we do. I think it's a choice that we make out of fear. We can do anything that we want to do. All right, I wanted to talk about that. I also want to talk about uh, one other thing. Um, maybe I'll talk about it in another blog. Katie, thanks for your email, your MySpace message. Uh, 